Okay, you are almost an expert on fractions. We have one video left to go, and that's adding and subtracting fractions. Uh, you've got your notes page with you. We'll go through the notes together. There is one section where I've already written the notes out for you, but I'll make sure I point that out when we get there. So first, um, in order to add or subtract fractions, you might remember that they have to have the same denominator. If you don't have a common denominator, you can't add or subtract the fractions. That's different from multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing, you remember, it's okay if the denominators are different, you just multiply them together. So let's assume we're looking at a problem where the denominators are the same. Then all you have to do is add together the numerators or subtract the numerators, depending on what operation you're doing. And then you'll keep the same denominator, whatever the denominator already is. So if we want to add uh, 4 sevenths plus 2 sevenths, we just add together the 4 and the 2. We keep the 7 on the bottom, so the answer is 6 sevenths. If you're looking at a problem where the denominators are not the same, then you have to start by finding a common denominator. And I've written on your notes page the steps for doing that, so you don't need to fill in the notes yourself. I did that because I want to show you an example, and I'm asking you to really pay attention to the example and make sure you understand how I'm getting the common denominator. So you don't need to focus on writing the notes because I've already done that. But you might want to write in um, some little hints for yourself, or if the language that I'm using isn't clear to you, then you might want to pause the video and write yourself some notes. So this is the example at the bottom of your page, 3 fourths plus 1 sixth. We can't add these together yet because they have different denominators. So to find a common denominator, we look for a number that both 4 and 6, both of our denominators, go into evenly. So that's called the least common multiple, you might remember. We're looking for the smallest number, the least, that both of these go into. So the least common multiple for 4 and 6 is 12. 4 goes into 12, and 6 goes into 12. There are other numbers that they both go into, like 24, but 12 is the smallest common multiple, the least common multiple, so that's what we're going to use. So we're going to rewrite these fractions using 12 as the denominator. So now I have to ask myself, if I want to write, rewrite 3 fourths using a denominator of 12, what would I have to multiply by? Well, to get from 4 to 12, I have to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by 3, the numerator and the denominator. When I multiply by 3, I get 9 over 12. Multiply the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3. Now I'll go to the other fraction and try to write it with a denominator of 12. So what do I have to multiply this fraction by to get a denominator of 12? I have to multiply 6 by 2. So I'll multiply the whole fraction by 2, and that gets me 2 over 12. So notice that the answer to that question, what do I multiply by, is always going to be different for the two fractions. This one has to be multiplied by 3, but this one has to be multiplied by 2. The goal is to get the same denominator in both fractions. Now that we have the same denominator, we know how to add these. We simply add the 9 and the 2 and keep the 12 on bottom. So we end with a result of 11 over 12. 